Hello, I'm Jennifer Gladstone, host of our series, America's Retirement Future. In this episode, we examine how state pension fund returns are seeing greater growth with investment in private equity. With us to discuss this topic is Jim Harrington, Private Equity Investment Officer for the West Virginia Investment Management Board. Hi, Jim. Welcome to the program. Hi, thanks for having me on today. Can you begin by telling us a little more about the mission and background of the West Virginia Investment Management Board? So the WBIMB was formed in 1997, and its job was to have professional investors look after the state money, to deliver the results with independence and objectivity, and to try to be free from any of the politics that sometimes hampers state funds. How many school teachers, first responders, and other dedicated public servants depend on returns from your organization to support their well-earned retirements? Right, a surprisingly high number. So West Virginia is a small state. They're 39th in the country, uh, 1.8 million population. But we're looking after 12% of the population of the state. So the state teachers, that's about a third of the money we look after, 59,000 active employees and 29,000 retirees. We also have the public employees, about another third of the money, with 43,000 active and 35,000 retirees. Uh, that's 80% of the individuals. We also look after the state uh, funds, the largest of which is called the Revenue Shortfall Reserve Fund. West Virginia has a collection of money used for budget shortfalls. They put money in in good years, and when there's a bad year, there's money available on short notice to cover any potential budget deficits. According to a recent report released by the American Investment Council, your fund's $2.2 billion private equity allocation has generated a 10-year return of over 16% after fees. This amounts to the second highest private equity return for any public pension fund across America. Can you tell us a little more about the critical role private equity plays in supporting the retirements of public servants in West Virginia? Sure. Well, First, I want to say I'm honored to be on that list, that there are quite a few of my peers that I respect the most that are also on that list with us. So let's talk about the role of private equity. It's pretty straightforward, higher returns. But investment theory will tell you that to get to that, you have to take more risk, uh, calculated risk. That is the way one beats the benchmark. Now, some people, their benchmark is uh, the public markets plus a small amount. But in private equity, it is also possible to be the random private equity benchmark, too, with good manager selection. It takes a lot of work, homework, uh, study to do that. But if one does that, they will have even higher rates of return and potentially lower risk. The payoff and benefit of that is that excess returns from cash flow, probably three years into a fund's life, can be sent directly to retirees or could be reinvested in asset classes that have lower risk in short time periods. What advice would you give to the chief investment officers of other public pension funds who are considering partnering with private equity? If you're not invested in private equity today, I think it bears looking into. And here's why. We talked about higher returns earlier, but let me take some more time on the risk. A lot of people are concerned about company by company risk in their private equity investments. And yes, we have a few zeros in our portfolio. A zero is a return of well, nothing. All the money from that one individual portfolio company is gone. But we also have plenty of three times our money, five times, 10, 20s. Last year, we had a 51 times our initial investment. So in the portfolio context, looking across all of your private equity program, please have the faith and confidence that over time, those all work out and you get the rates of return you thought you would get, but it doesn't happen by accident. We talked about research, dedication. Now you need to look into some of the portfolio companies that are held by your prospective managers or your current managers, but also look into their back office practices. This is uh, how they run their own business. And also no one can avoid the legal due diligence in terms of how is the fund looking after both the general partner, that's the firm, or the limited partner, that's us. I have to thank uh, our team at Franklin Park, by the way. 
they're a consultant. They do a fantastic job. There is so much volume in private equity. I'm, I'm the only person in uh, West Virginia who's the private equity investment officer. So to look through hundreds and hundreds of funds every year takes a team that, you know, without which I couldn't do this. I, we wouldn't have these results. What new projects are you working on? Yes. So it's a bit of an ongoing project, but it's definitely getting emphasis this year. And that is the Emerging Manager Program. You can get a quick sports analysis. And that is, you know, the winning team uh, this year may not be the winning team next year, and not in five years, uh, probably not in 10 years, except by random chance. Well, the same is true in private equity uh, <laughs> for the same reasons uh, as the sports team, really. So what we've done is made a special effort to look into tomorrow's stars who will uh, grow over time and do so in a positive way. Well, that takes a lot of homework. And the thing is that 90, 95% of the time, it doesn't work out that, uh, or we watch them and see where they are in three or four years. But you need to do that work uh, because some of the best firms of tomorrow will be sold out. Imagine running a business where the client comes to you and says, I would love to give you 30 or $50 million, but you have to say, I'm sorry, I just can't take it. Uh, we're going to uh, give that spot, that allocation to someone who said yes to us three or five years ago, who recognized our future. So that homework needs to be done today and we're doing it. It really does sound like you're in that sweet spot. Jim, thank you so much for speaking with us today. Thanks for having me on. And I hope you will all join us next time for our series, America's Retirement Future.